Well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. It's around that time right here on KAZ Radio, where I have the spotlight on none other than Dr. Woods. How you doing, Dr. Woods? Oh, I'm doing well, and I am blessed. I'm so blessed today to be here with you on KAZ TV. Well, thank you so much. I am so forward looking towards this interview. We've been talking for a couple months now and preparing for your new show. But before we get into all of that, before we get into the new show and your ministry, I want to know, and I know my listeners want to know, how did Jesus Christ come into your life? Oh, precious, precious Jesus. Yes, well... Jesus came into my life, if I think back, at the age of nine, I was baptized at the age of nine. So I grew up in the church. Okay. Okay. Grew up in the church and went to Sunday school and had to participate in uh, various things of the church, the choir. But, you know, it wasn't until I became an adult that I really can say that I understood what having a relationship with Christ was all about. And that was, you know, earth shattering for me, wonderful, touching. I always felt, you know, his presence in my life. But to be able to understand it truly at an adult age is when I truly can say I met Christ. Okay. And tell me about the experience or experiences. (laughs) Yes. The experience says, well, I, 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 as I said, I grew up in the church and I began participating in Sunday school where I came along and be, became a Sunday school teacher. Okay. Um, and over the years, serving in the various ministries. And then remember in the 90s, well, my ex- personal experience with, with Christ was, was at a younger age. Okay. What I, I knew then that there was a special, a special calling that he had on my life. And over time, I would start to like want to know more and more about what that was. And, and spending, I was always spending quiet time with myself and not realizing, you know, thinking back that I was, you know, having quiet prayer time with him and meditation time with him. And just knowing that, um, just being in his presence, always learning and, and reading about his word in Sunday school and, and wanting to do more during the summertime, going to Bible school. And so then as an adult, growing and as an adult in the church, remember in the 90s when we had the conference in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Okay. Azusa. Okay, you call right. That? Mm-hmm. Azusa. Mm-hmm. I went there and I had such a life changing experience. Many, many ministries were formed out yes. of that, out of that ministry. Many were. Uh, I can call some prominent ones like T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes, and uh, Miles Monroe, and Donnie McClurkin. I could go on and on. And, sure. And um, the experience was one that really touched my heart. That was when I really, truly, and genuinely understood what the call was on my life because Amen. I was so wrapped up in the campus of Oral Roberts University, okay. I wanted to attend right. seminary there. That's wow. where I wanted to go. I was so intrigued with it that that was, my heart was there. And the, it, and that's where my call originated. Tell me, uh, tell us about the storm. The storm. The storm. Every Christian that I know of, even Jesus himself, had storms. Absolutely. Temptations, issues, situations. Uh, mm-hmm. The family that's listening and watching, you know, want to know how did you overcome the storm and and what qualifies you today to have a show to tell us about a church with no walls? Mm-hmm. I mean, what was the storm? You don't have to share all of them, but share a storm that that said, you know what, this storm brought me to Jesus, when Jesus entered into me. Because all of us have gone to church. Absolutely. But when did the church get in you? When the church got in me. Well, there's many storms, but the one that sticks out for me that really brought me to Christ was when I was in a marriage that was not based on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Mm. My first marriage um, at the age of 22, um, there Christ was not in that marriage. Yeah. I didn't realize it at the time, but over the years, 
I, I came to realize how he wasn't there, and that relationship pulled me away from my family, um, which I regret those mistakes today. Sure. And it was a, it was a relationship that it was an abusive relationship. Um, I tried to justify it by saying, oh, it only happened maybe once every six to eight months. So I could, you know, it wasn't that bad. I, I wasn't, you know, battered every day. And so I tried to justify it until one day there was no longer being able to stay in the position that I was in. Yes. And I asked the Lord, because I missed my family, And I asked the Lord, if you get me out of this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Wow. That is a storm. Yes, it is. And he did. And I am. Amen. Amen. You know, now I want you to connect some dots for us because um, from the time that Jesus Christ entered to your life and you surrendered to him to becoming Dr. Woods, tell us the story. Story that had me on the journey. Had you on the journey. From surrendering my life to become Dr. Woods. Well, I wanted to be a doctor of medicine. Okay, I can see that. And I found out later on in life that God said, no, you're not going to be a doctor of medicine, but you will be a doctor of the gospel Mm. of Jesus Christ. And so after trying to pursue medicine, and that was the very first time that I have ever felt him not being with me. It was my stepping away from him. He didn't step away from me. I stepped away from him trying to pursue medicine until I realized after the third day, the third day I realized that I had to come to my senses and get back on path obedient to where he told me to go. Yes. And that was seminary. Wow. And when I did that, all the doors opened up. Everything fell right into place. I was admitted without even the interview. The lady told the admissions director told me that I was my timing was 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 great because they were about to close registration. And after leaving the medical school that I was in, I got a full refund of all books and, and all tuition. Usually you lose something. Mm-hmm. I didn't lose anything. And the Lord allowed me to go over and place myself, realign, reposition, Amen. and be where I'm supposed to be. Isn't that how it works? Yes. When, when, when the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man or woman or person, they're ordered by the they're Lord. They're ordered by the Lord. And you listened, you heard... And look at look look at the doors that open. Yes, and it was trusting him. It yes. was being able to to trust him and to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me because I didn't know where I was going. I had no, you know, I didn't know how this was going to work out. My plans were different, but he put the desire in my heart, so his desire became my desire. Amen. So you go to seminary, and uh, which one did you go to? Ashland Theological Seminary. Ashland, one of the more uh, popular Mm -hmm. uh, ones uh, where a lot of astute people go, (laughs) uh, I must say, because those that come out of there seem to be very, very well versed in the word and theology and hermeneutics and stuff like that and everything else. What is your passion, however? My passion is I'm a caregiver. I have a heart for people. I love helping people. That's my passion. And I wanted to, I asked God to show me how to be able to bridge the gap from secular to spiritual. Wow. I wanted to know how to bring those two together. You always hear people say, okay, well, this is what I do in the secular realm, and this is what I do uh, for Christ. Okay. Well, I feel that it's, it should all be one. I feel that it should be seamless. There's cohesion there okay. because of the gifts and the talents and the abilities that he gives us. They should be one. Right. What you do in the world is representing Christ. So all it should time. all be right. one. Right. Right. So that was what I asked him for. And he gave me that in that direction. 
And so uh, I went from business, I went from a business background to moving into the uh, profession of counseling. Now, here's something I've, I've always wondered, and I'm sure you can, can help us all on this. When you say you, you want to make it cohesive, you know, the, the spiritual mm-hmm. with the physical, or when it comes to mental health, however, it, it seems as though there has been, it's either one or the other. Right. Um, what, what is it for real? Is it, is it a spiritual issue or is it a psychological, mental, physical issue or, or, is, it, or is it both? So for mental health, and here is what, how I learned regarding how to bridge this secular and spiritual gap. I learned at Ashland to look at it from four different point of views, four different perspectives. The unchristian unchristian view, the spiritual view, the the, uh, parallel view, and then the integrated view. Okay. So if you look at it from that perspective, the unchristian view says that theology and psychology are separate. Okay that we're, we believe that theology has no place in counseling to help those who are suffering from mental health issues. That's a secular view. That's, yes, mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. secular, unchristian Christian view. view. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, because mental health is when we're suffering mentally, psychologically, emotionally uh, from a, a disorder, a mental health disorder, and or it could be something that's related to trauma, and or it could be related to, as well, various other aspects of our life, something that has caused something to, uh, to start to function in a way that we call maladaptive. Okay. okay. So the unchristian view says theology and psychology are separate. Then we have the spirit, spiritualized view, which says that everything can be addressed through Scripture, which it can, mm-hmm. but in totality that nothing else is necessary. Mm-hmm. That's what that is saying. Okay. And then we have the parallel view, which is saying that psychology and theology are parallel, but they are independent of each other. They're totally separate. They're independent from each other. So the caregiver believes in the Bible in addition to having clinical skills, but they keep them on this straight parallel, but they're totally separate. So the integrated view says, okay, we're going to take that and we're going to integrate the both together. We're going to take the theology and the psychology and we're going to integrate the two to help that person. It's going to be beneficial for them. We're going to integrate the clinical aspect and we're going to integrate the uh, theological aspect for a mutual beneficial, beneficial way for the person to grow, for the person to be able to enhance their skills, for them to be able to understand through the Holy Spirit what their true identity is mm. in Christ, and then be able to understand what their purpose is. Sure. Because if you have theology, spirituality, you can do that along with giving them the clinical skills of positive coping skills, how to uh, change behavior, how to be able to focus on um, strategies and techniques to improve, right? But if you take that and you integrate it with theology, you've got the whole package. Got it. You've got the whole package. Oh, but as a professional, you know, it's, it's interesting because you, you'll watch um, evangelicals, for instance. Mm-hmm. And I think they take the view that everything is of the devil. Um, and so they believe that, you know, laying on the hands or something of that nature is going to cure this person of their mental issues. Um, which... I don't believe that's correct. I don't believe that, you know, you laying on hands on this guy is all that's needed. There's more that's needed. And I love the fact that you talked about discipline and and you talked about positiveness as well as Jesus, Mm -hmm. because that's what we we need doctors for is I I like the word holistic, I think. Exactly. Um, So, 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 so what do you do um, when you're trying to, to explain to people, your your career not your career but your your practice how do you explain your practice to others 
I explain my practice to others that I am a counselor. I, I am a psych, psychotherapist that focuses on helping people with dealing with social, emotional, and spiritual problems. It could be related to mental health where a lot of things, some things we have a predisposition, just sure. like for alcoholism or an addiction. Um, some family members through the generation, mm -hmm. through the generation, there was uh, something, someone, grandparents, ancestors who suffered from an illness, a right. mental health illness of either depression or anxiety or one of the mood disorders such as bipolar or one of the uh, personality disorders such as schizophrenia. Right. And so uh, through the generations, that makes that person, they may have a predisposition Sure. to obtain that mental illness. And then there is be behavior or environments that take place because we, we learn from our environment. So there's environments such as sexual abuse, child abuse, all the very physical abuse, mm -hmm. emotional abuse, mm -hmm. that may also trigger we, those, pre, um, those presuppositions or those pre-existing behaviors, just like cancer. We all have cancerous cells in our bodies that mm -hmm. are dormant, but some become more active than others based on and on our, our chemical makeup. Right, right. So the same way is with mental health. Some become more active than others based on our chemical makeup, our environment, what we're exposed to, our genetics, and family history. So I like to treat, help individuals to be able to understand how, how that is impacting their lives, either um, in their work, in their personal lives, relationships, right. either in their you know, school or spirituality. And so I like to help them to develop positive strategies so that we can help them to understand how to be able to move forward with that. And I like to also, I take the integrated view. I incorporate whatever their spirituality, right. I incorporate right. their spirituality if they, if that's what they want. Because okay. I ask them that. Gotcha. Up front. If that's not what they want, that's not what we do. Yeah, you, you know, I because we've had several guests on other shows, and I, I can recall um, Dr. Cheryl who, who went into all the way back into times of, of slavery and the cruelty and the things that happened there and how that literally got into the DNA of folks. And I think she called it Mentos or something like that. And it actually went up the line. And this is why you see some of the similar attitudes and functions of, of black men, for instance, and, and women that should have been solved but wasn't because – it's been repeated so often through generation, what what they call a generational curse. So, based I, I, on behaviors and environment. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a great show. I'm looking forward to hearing more and more about it. But let's let's get into the show. What is your show, uh, the Church Without Walls? What is it going to be all about? The Church Without Walls. So, Lord, birthed that during the pandemic for me. He birthed that during that time. Um, he let me show, you know, and so we were being shut down and we couldn't go to our local churches. And so he brought to me, just stirred up the desires of his heart for mine, was to still continue to be able to carry on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though we weren't going to the actual physical locations of the church, we are the church. Amen. People confuse the brick and mortar. For that's, that represents the church. No, we are the church. Christians, Amen. we are the church. Amen. And so, so lo the Lord took technology. He took the World Wide Web. It earned its title <laughs> and allowed us to go forth to continue on with the gospel. And so I said, Lord, how do you want me to do this? Because I, I just have this desire to be able to reach others and continue on. And so I, I, it's, it's, the gospel has no limits, no boundaries, no walls, no restrictions in his word. So as, as long as we are bringing forth his word, the sky is the limit. And, and he was also showing me that 
the walls, I, I heard another preacher preach about how the, the various walls that we deal with and all of the restrictions that we have. We have walls of younger versus older. We've got walls of racism. We have the walls of the denominational walls. Mm -hmm. We've got walls regarding social and e economic wealth. So the Lord was just showing, speaking to me, to use this platform to help people to understand, to break down those walls, and what have we learned from being confined and restricted in 2020? Right. What did right. we learn from all of right. that? How can we go forth from what we learned? And so I wanted to bring forth... Um, talking more about okay, this is what we learned. This is how we go outside of the walls. Let's 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 talk about Christ. Let's talk about how He's impacting us in the in our normal everyday lives. Right. Dealing with mental health, dealing with other women who are 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 making. Uh, who are also in the gospel, opening up doors for others. There are various other ministries out here, very other other things that are happening that in the in the city of Cleveland to help various other women, um, and even men as well. But to make known, a lot of people are not aware of the resources that are here to help. And so when we stay confided in our walls, whether they be walls of isolation, where we remove ourselves from others, mm -hmm because we tend to do that, mm -hmm. we isolate. But this thing called the World Wide Web, the internet, K-A-Z-T-V, sure. can get through that person and help them to see that there are some more resources out here for you. Salvation is here for you. Amen. We have to be creative with how we want to spread the gospel. No, the, the word doesn't change. The gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't change. That's right. But we want to go, the pandemic has showed us if, if things are shut down, we still got to bring forth Christ's word. That's right. Go into all the world. That's right. That, that's, that's right. Matthew 28, 19 and Mark 16, 15. We are to go forth into the uttermost parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, teaching and pre preaching the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. Proclaiming the word of God. Absolutely. Now, your, your program is um, everybody-based, but I know you you mentioned women in, in particular. Um, what do you think or what do you know is one of the struggles that you'll be tackling in the up-and-coming weeks and months about some of the struggles women have? Some of the struggles that women have is <clears throat> being able to be affirmed in who they are, mm -hmm. being validated. Because we live in a society that places men first, which are our brothers, and I love them, and they're, everybody has their position. We all have their position. But I think that one should not be minimized either. And there's a structure of things, God's order. We want to follow God's order and structure of things. But I think women, we face the challenge of being affirmed that we are intelligent, uh, God-fearing women who the Lord uses us also. He uses us to speak. He, for, you know, to speak the gospel. He uses us to help others. He uses us as a resource. He helps to, you know, he uses us to make a way where others may, to reach others that may not be reached. And so I think those are the challenge, some of the challenges. Right. Not all of them. Sure. Because there's plenty other I can name. Sure. Um, uh, domestic violence and yes. um, dealing with that and, and various addictions, alcoholism and drug. Uh, the common ones that we see every day, but what about the ones that we don't see every right. day? The ones for the women who are here wanting to reposition themselves so that they can help others. And and what about the successes of women? I I see a lot of successes, mm -hmm. successful women uh, doing things that hadn't been done, things that hadn't been done by men. Matter of fact, some things that weren't done by men are not done by women. You know, they came up with these ideas. They came up with these ways of doing Absolutely. things. Is that going to be a part of your show? Are you going to uh, spotlight and, and talk about some of the accomplishments of, of, of your sisters? Yes, yes, because their accomplishments 
will also help the community. It's all about community. Community as we all come together. You see, they don't, a lot of people don't know who all the sisters are. I don't know who all the sisters are. So I want to use this as a, form, a, a platform to get to know who all the sisters are, the resources, so that we can reach out to our community. Our community awesome. is everybody. It's awesome. everybody. And that's how we grow. That's how we learn. Um, through our community of each other. Well, here, here at KAZ, you have stopped at the right place. There are so many awesome women of God that have graced these studios and have shared with the world, and I hope you get to meet them all. I hope I do, too. I've seen quite a few of yes. them, and I know I know some of them. Yes, and yes. And they have been a blessing to me. Yes, yes. I, I just like to mention one uh, on the top of my list right who ahead. was with me when I was at that in that storm. Sure. And that was Lady Barbara Gilmore. Yes. She was with me when I was in that storm that you asked me about. And she helped me to hold my head up yes. in, that tr- in that storm, to hold my head up. And once I held my head up, I could see what God had for me. Yes, yes. So, Lovely. Yes. <clears throat> Love Lady Gilmore. She has been the mama of KAZ since its inception almost. Okay. <laughs> so she's been with she's us She's been almost. a mother for me, I yes, tell you, yes. through my storms. And I love her dearly, and I'm great thankful for well, her. Well, we got a few minutes left. Okay. Go for it. A few minutes left, go, go for, for it. it. <laughs> you okay. Got, you got three minutes. Go ahead. Tell them what you want to tell them. Well, what I would like to say to all those who are watching, and I thank you all for watching and supporting. There's so much love that comes from you. And I just want you to know that whatever God has laid on your heart and mind during the pandemic, whatever changes he wants you to make, I would say step out on faith. Because Jesus, everything regarding Jesus was a change. Everything he did was a change. When he came forth with, he upset the, uh, the Pharisees. When he came forth with the kingdom of God, everything Jesus did, performing miracles, everything he did was a change. It changed everything in others' lives. And so whatever he has calling you to do that, that he brought forth in you during this pandemic, go forth. Go forth right now and ask God to show you and give you the way. All I know is that I'm walking by faith. So I ask you to walk by faith as well and join me and walk by faith. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And so I want to leave you with this, stepping out on change that God has spoken to you about during this time. There's an author called Zig Ziglar who wrote, fear has two meanings. Forget anything and run or face anything everything and rise. I encourage you, my sisters and my brothers, to face everything and rise. And lastly, quote I want to leave with you with, by Charles Stanley, God is creative in his approach to mankind's need for salvation. Sensitivity to the leading of the Holy Spirit achieves far more in the area of witnessing than we ever could accomplish in our own strength. So leave room for creativity, leave room for sensitivity, and most importantly, leave room for Christ. Thank you. God bless you. Well, folks, you heard it first right here on KAZ Radio. We're looking forward to a biweekly show with Dr. Cynthia Woods called The Church Without Walls. And we look forward to that every single Saturday, every other Saturday at at 3 o'clock. So I always close like this. I love you. Jesus loves you. And there's nothing y'all can do about it. Until next time. Amen.